Um, if you have your Bible, three openings. And you know when I say three openings, it's going to be Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Smile. It's not the end of the word. Proverbs 20, 27, Romans chapter 8, verse 14, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and then verse 10. Right? So, it's on the screen, um, so we're just going to follow the leadings of those who mix for us. Glory to God. The Bible says, the spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the inward depth of his heart. The Bible says, I, I taught us last week, I want to know whether we are still, uh, whether we remember the things we say. Um, this row, this column, I said that when you find a small letter S in scriptures, that that's not talking about what? It's not talking about the Holy Spirit. All right, so it's talking about your own human spirit. So that one is small letterheads or big letterheads? Small. So it's talking about your own human spirit. The Bible says the spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord. So inside of you, there is a lamp of God there. The Bible says, searching all the inner depth of his heart. So when you see me saying, you speak to me for counsel, and then I'm, I said, wait, let me search it out. Right, so you can actually search things out in your spirit, man, to know whether what he, the person is saying is true or not. Some people talk to me and I'm smiling and they're lying. And I know because I've searched. Because the spirit of a man is the candle lamp of God. All right, let's go to Romans 8.14. If you are a brilliant student here, can I hear Romans 8.14? Say it out. You are not looking at it. All right. I, glory be to God. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons. First Corinthians chapter 14 and then verse 10. Oh, so you don't know that one. <laughs> the Bible says, There are, it may be, so many kinds of languages in the world, and none of them is without significance. Many kinds of languages, but none of them is without significance. You've read that scripture again and again. Today, you will know what it means. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Father, thank you. Because the entrance of your word today will give light to your people. Thank you, O oh God, because as simple folks, we've come to learn at your feet. I make my tongue the pen of a ready writer. And I write the word of life upon the spirit of your people. Lord, if you have given to me, I want to give to your people. Lord, let the bread of your word, let it minister life to your people. After now, O oh God, let us be better people. Let us walk according to your counsel. In Jesus' name, and amen. Today, I want to speak to you on led by the Spirit. Led by the Spirit. Some people already knew the title, right? Um, led by the Spirit. So, who is going to lead you or who is leading you? All right, you can have your seat even in God's presence. If you're online, please get a place where you will not be distracted. And um, let's do this together. Amen. All right. Um, led by the Spirit. Um, today we are moving forward on our series on divine leadings and God guiding us and God helping us. And um, last week we started out by emphasizing certain truth. And first of all, we emphasized that the Lord speaks. Right? We said that your God is not dumb. Right? Do you, so tell your neighbor, my God is not dumb. So when somebody is not dumb, what does he mean? It means the person speaks, all right? And so we emphasize that the Lord speaks and he speaks without ambiguity. That means he speaks clearly, explicitly, uh, and expressly. So the Lord actually speaks. And that's the first thing we emphasize. And we said that the Lord will not lead you majorly into ambiguity so that dreams are a way God leads but dreams are not the way the Lord leads. So that you can be led by your dreams uh, but you are not supposed to depend on your dreams for divine guidance. We, we said that last week, right? So I'm not saying trash everything dreams because now when I said you have a dream during the week, so I'm going, I didn't dream. No, we didn't want, I don't want you to hate dreams. I'm only saying that for validity, you are not supposed to depend on dreams for divine guidance. The Bible says as many, Romans 8, 14 that we read, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, not as many as are led by dreams. And we said that even non-believers dream, right? So the advantage you have over an unbeliever is the fact that you are led by the Spirit. An unbeliever cannot be led by the Spirit, right? So that our advantage as New Testament believers is being led of the Spirit. Today, we want to take it further. I want to help you design the voice of the Holy Spirit. 
I mean, I've seen people who ask me, I've been praying for two years whether to relocate or not. And I tell them, listen, it's not that difficult. It's either you can't hear him. So just accept that I can't hear God, right? And go and look for help, right? So that you, somebody ask you out uh, and, and ask you out and say, I'll go and pray. And after six months, we ask you, say, I'm still praying. You know, he, God does not, it's not that, it's not that deep. If I can use that word, it's not that deep. It's either you are not interested or you cannot hear God, right? Uh, and some people say, I, I don't know whether I should leave my job and take another one. I have a job offer. And we're asking, um, so what are you going to do? You say, I've not dreamt about it. And I'm thinking, okay, so we are saying, if you don't dream, you say, I'm praying, I've been praying. I mean, I see church members come to me and say, I'm in that decision, and I really don't know what to do. I, I don't know whether I should marry this year, or whether I should even marry this lady. I don't even know whether to choose between Taya and Cynthia, because they all seem to be on fire for God. And I have a good job. They've given me another offer for another job. I don't know whether I should take that job or not. So you are going to make decisions on a daily basis. Can we, do we understand that? This morning you made decisions. Some decisions are so, they are not so important, not so big. Uh, they are not very consequential. Like for instance, you chose what you are going to wear. None of us had one clothes in our wardrobe. We still had to, you may not have many, but you had to choose. This is what I'm going to wear, and I'm not going to wear this one. So that's a choice. But there are decisions that define and determine destiny, like who to marry, like what job to take, like where to live, right? Um, give me another one, like where to invest money, <laughs> whether I should buy land, or whether I should keep the 10,000 with somebody and the person escape eventually. You understand what I would say? So <laughs> everything, you've got to decide what to do all right but, but but listen dear folks uh, the spirit is there for us so that he can guide us let me start by saying that you cannot tell how the lord leads you you can't determine how the lord leads you and that's the problem i have with dreamers dreamers only want god to lead them via dreams right um but you can't choose how he will lead you you can only choose to follow his leading therefore it is important you understand all of the ways in which god speaks right so he leads via the witness he leads via the voice of the spirits he leads via dreams via prophecy via vision it's important you understand all of these things right so that you can actually be led by it all right so let me move on here i i remember i had a friend when i was in the university um i'd always known him for a while so he was in 100 level engineering student and then he was going to 200 level and i met him somewhere at the walkway in the University of Illori. On the walkway, we were walking. And the guy said, um, why did I call it the walkway? Because some of you understand it, right? Some people don't understand it. The Lord give you understanding as to what the walkway means. But it's a place where people gather and just speak, right? And so I was speaking with this guy, and he said, Pisaya, I have an issue. And I, 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 I sincerely wanted to help his issue. I said, what's going on? He said, I, I, I have an issue. I said, what is it? He said, I have an offer to go to Kenya. Um, to go and continue my study because the course I'm doing, I really don't like it. Um, so I have an offer to go to Jomo Kenyatta University in Kenya to advance my study and all of that. And I, I listened to, uh, to him and I felt that's very good. So what do you want to do? He said, I don't know what the Lord wants me to do. He said, but I've done something. He said, I, I, I then put a fleece out. Have you heard people say I put a fleece out? All right, if you are not so, if you are not born in Bible study, you didn't go to Sunday school, you may not know what we call a fleece. What you call a fleece is actually um, what happened to the man by the name of Gideon uh, in scriptures who the Lord spoke to, but he wasn't sure it was God that spoke to him. So he actually put a test, like a cotton wool out and said, let it be wet and let the dry place be dry. All right, so this is what is called a fleece. It's like cotton uh, wool and all of that. Um, so my friend actually put a fleece out. I mean, imagine somebody putting a fleece out in 21st century. He, he did that. So he bought a cotton wool. Uh, and then he said the Lord, very sincere heart. So he put it out and said, Lord, if you want me to go to Jomo Kenyatta University, please let everything be dry and let this wool be wet. And then he woke up the next morning and the wool was wet. The cotton wool was wet. Right? So he said, praise the Lord. Now I know I should go. And I said, so what's the problem? I mean, why are you not telling me? You should pack and go. And then he said, he said to the Lord, Lord, I am sorry, but... Uh, I, I would like to test this again. And you know, Gideon also tested it again. And so he said, I, I want to test it again. So what did this guy do? He put the wool out and said, Lord, this time, if you want me to stay in the University of Lorraine, let the wool be dry. Let the wool be dry and everything be wet. If you want me to stay. If you want me to go, then the wool should be wet. And I will know. So 
The next morning he woke up and the wood was dry. The wood was dry. So the second test says stay in Unilori. The first one says go to Jomo Kenyatta. So now he was more confused than when he even did it. So he was looking for me. He said the wood was dry. The wood was supposed to be wet because that means I should go. I, because the one, it was wet and go. Now I changed it. Maybe I should not have changed it, but I changed it. I said, God, let it be dry. Because in scriptures it was changed, so I changed it too. And the wool was dry this time around. And dry means stay. So he didn't know what to do. And I know many believers are also in that spot of confusion. That point of confusion where you, everything, you read scriptures today. You are very persuaded. It's like Manchester United and Greenwood, mass in Greenwood. Today it looks like they are going to take the player back. Next tomorrow it looks like they are not going to take him back. You see? If you don't understand football, leave it alone. Let me go back to scriptures, all right? So, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that so at certain times, you look very persuaded that, ah, with that dream I've had, this decision to make. And then, next morning, you just look at the person and something in you, like you lose your peace, and you're wondering, ah, what am I to do? So, it looks like the more closer you are to finding God's direction, the more farther you go from the direction of God. Today, I want us to look at what is the sure guidance of the Spirit as it concerns us. The Spirit guides us and it guides in a sure way, right? As you have seated before me, I want to tell you that there are three voices that are open to you. So, if you want to write, three different voices open to every man. Every spiritual man, three voices open to you. Number one, the voice of your body. That's the first one. There is the voice of your body. That's what you call my feeling. If you cannot, if your body cannot speak, then you are in a terrible space. There are what we call the five senses of the body. The ability to hear, to smell, to feel, uh, to see, right? So, it's the voice of the body. Sometimes you say, ah, my body, my body is paining me. Have you, have you ever said that? And then you know it is time to sleep because you, you've overworked yourself. Now, that's the voice of your body. Your body speaks so that sometimes you are even cooking and you are watching Korean movie. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And suddenly you start smelling something. That means you have made a bond sacrifice. You see, because you are watching the movie. So, ability to smell is the reason you did not burn down the house. So, that's the voice of your body. It speaks. Now, I, I, now there is also a thing that believers say. Believers, would you hear believers? Would you, you say this also. You say, I feel I should not go to that place. Now, when you say you feel you should not go to that place, are you saying that you... You, you are tired. So, feeling therefore is not the word to use. When people say, I feel I should not go to that meeting, they are actually talking about something deeper on the inside that is resisting them and don't want them to go. They are saying, I'm not comfortable about this journey. But they say, I feel I can. No, feeling is a word you use as it concerns your body, not a word you use as it concerns the other voice of your spirit. So, the second voice is the voice of the soul. The voice of your mind is the place of your reason. Is the place of your emotions. Is your place of your intelligence. Have you ever loved? Have you ever really loved a woman? You love a woman. Learn that she is the woman. Now, do you? Oh, don't worry. That, that's the song that we call Kana when we were listening to song. Not the one you sing now. You see, our love song looks like spiritual song now, right? Oh, so that song was not spiritual. Oh, so someone was trying to. Love a woman, Pastor Deep Divine Lord. No, so it's not, it's, it's just the kind of song we use in those days. You see, if you ever love a woman, where do you love the woman from? If you ever love a man, is it your body? When you see the person, something tingles. Why are you doing like you don't know what I'm talking about? The person broke your heart, does not mean you didn't love the person now. So respond to me. I'm not at fault. You understand that? <laughs> so, <laughs> so talk to me uh, when you love somebody where do you love is it your body it's inside it's, it's your soul it's an attachment it, when the phone of that person rings the call comes in something excites on the inside it's like you are jumping on the inside it's the voice of your soul and if you don't understand what I'm talking about may you find love one day in the name of Jesus alright so praise God hallelujah and then the third one is the voice of the human spirit the voice of your spirit. As it concerns the things of the spirit, we must use the proper vocabulary and the proper language as it concerns your spirit. Your spirit does not respond to feeling. When you want to talk about your spirit, you should use the word I sense. 
You don't say, I feel I should not go. No, I sense I should not go to that place. That's the proper language. Because the things of the spirit are sensed. And I'm going to show you that. The voice of the human spirit is what sometimes we call the inward voice. What is the human spirit? Because the Lord will lead you via your human spirit. I want to move on here, but I want you to understand it. That's why I don't want to quickly go to deep. Because actually I should just go to deep and finish this sermon, right? But I don't want to quickly go to deep, right? The Lord will lead you via your what? Speak to me. Your spirit. The Lord will speak to you via your spirit. So help me preach to your neighbor and touch your neighbor and say, the Lord will speak to you through your spirit. All right. It's not my spirit. It's not the spirit of the pastor. Now let me say this to you. You will not be led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will speak to your spirit so that there can be a break in transmission. That the spirit is speaking and you can't pick it and you say the spirit is not saying anything. Just what I'm saying. So the spirit will speak to you. But it's going to speak to you through your spirit. So it takes a decoding. I'm going to show you that. Don't worry. Let me not go ahead of myself. What is the woman's spirit? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and then verse 23. What is the human spirit? What is the human spirit? The Bible says, Now may the God of peace sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body. Can you see that? That's the triune of man. That's where you find it. Your spirit, your soul, and your body. He said, May you be preserved blameless until the day even of Christ. Job 32 verse 8, the Bible says, There is a spirit in man and then the breath of the Almighty gives him understanding. The breath of the Almighty. And I say, The spirit of the Almighty gives him understanding. Romans chapter 8 and then verse 16, the Bible says the spirit bears witness. To bear witness, that word witness means to corro corro corroborate a truth. To say that this is a truth. So somebody is saying a truth, I come and I bear witness. And I say, I'm corroborating the facts. That what he's saying is the truth. So what is happening is that there is a truth you know. The spirit will come and corroborate and say what you are saying is actually the valid truth. The Bible says the spirit bears witness with what? Speak to me louder. Is it your soul? Is it your body? So where will you get the witness from? So that as you are hearing me, you are hearing me with your physical senses. That's your hear, right? But when it comes to the speaking of the spirit, uh, you will hear it with your inner ear. That is what you call your spirit. Now, I, I, to, to explain that, listen to this. The spirit only bears witness with your spirit, not your mind and your body. So that what he says to you may not be logically acceptable. Do you understand that? I, I showed that about Jacob. He said, take stripes and let them be. And then that was how all the animals. If you look at it logically and sense-wise, it doesn't make sense. The Lord can tell a man to leave uh, Lagos. You see, you hear the story of people living in London and going to Lagos. That does not look supernatural. But what if the Lord tells you to leave Lagos and go to Ophir? Just you what I'm saying? Or go to Okene in Kogi State. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, now, if you get home, tell your dad. And your dad left Okene to Lokoja and he's living in Lokoja. You see what I'm saying? And then you now went home and told your dad that daddy, God said I should go to Okene. No, you are not going to Lokoja. You are going to Okene. And your dad will say something is wrong. Why? Because that's not natural. That's not the natural progression of things. That is not the way things are. That's not the way things are expected even to be. God does not eat, deal with the outward man. He only deals with the soul of man. It is the responsibility of the believer to do something about his outward man. Now, listen, the, re the rebirth of the human spirit is God's prerogative, but the renewing of your mind is your responsibility. Peter spoke concerning the inward man, the spirit of a man. First Peter chapter 3 verse 4. He called it the eddy man of the heart. The man of the heart. The inward man. 2 Corinthians 4, 16. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. The Bible talks about the spirit of a man. It talks about the inward man. So when we talk about the inward man, in scriptures, you find inward man, you find the idi man of the heart is speaking of human spirits. Do you understand that? Do you get that? Now... I want us to take a journey to Genesis. All right? This is not supposed, I'm not sure this is on the projection. I want to teach you some truth here and just follow me. If for the purpose, give me Genesis 1, 26 to 27. Let it be on the screen. 
I want to teach something here that is fundamental. If you are going to understand the leading of the Lord, just you know I'm saying, it's very key, very important. Now, you are going to jack your neighbor and tell your neighbor it's better you stand up now if you are sleeping. Jack him. You see, do you people not understand Jack? Aha. Uh -huh. Because you see, they can't miss out on this truth. This truth here, yeah, they can't miss out on it. If you get this, you are enough to go. It's enough for you to go. I want to share something that's very important. Now listen to this. The book of the beginnings is called the introduction. Everything you can find in the book of Genesis. If you understand the book of Genesis, you will understand many things about life. Right? So in Genesis, the Bible says, uh, in Genesis 1, 26 to 27, and that's what's on the screen. Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the beast of the air. And then verse 27 says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created in male and female, he created them. Now God said, Let us make Fisayo. Let us make Ah. Let us make Olaomi. What did he say? He said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. I want to define some things here for you so that you'll get it. The first one is that word, our likeness. You see, that word, our likeness, in the Hebrew, actually means the exact duplicate of another. So when God said, let us make man after our own likeness, he was saying, let us make an exact duplicate of us. Now, if you see an original, I, I give you a document, perhaps I give you a document, and I say, um, Celine photocopy this document for me. Uh, if you bring the photocopy, it should look the same. Is that not so? If, if one has XY as a beginning and she brought something that has GH, I already know that she's bringing the wrong document. So that is not an exact duplicate. That is not a likeness. What the Lord made at the beginning is the word exact duplicate. That means that man's indispensable quality is that man is made to be like God in the core of man. In the core of man, you are made to function like God. Because they let us make man in our own image after our own likeness. Now, that means the exact duplicate of another. Now, listen. In verse 27, the Bible says... So God created man. So the first thing it was that he said he was going to do that. Is that not the first thing? He said, let us. So he, he, he made that announcement. He, he got a people to agree to it. And how did we know that he followed through? Because he probably could say it and not have done it or be able to do it. But scripture says, so God created man. That word created there in the Hebrew actually means to feel. To feel. So what God did, um, it's that the Lord feel. Now, the Hebrew translation says, and Elohim bara the man with his image. That word created means to feel with his image. So what God did was that God filled man with a measure of himself. At the beginning. So when they say, so you see, that's why I said English language is a, is a lesser language according uh, to language and linguistics uh, he says so god created man so that word creates can you see that word creates there it means bara god filled man with his image he filled man with his image so for you to understand that don't you think we need to understand the word image because what the lord said is the word bara bara means to fill with image is that not what we said do you get it to that level so god actually add something and said first thing he said, we are going to do something. So because you want to create, some of you have companies and businesses you started. The first thing is that you had an idea. Is that not so? God had an idea in Genesis 1.26. In Genesis 1.27, he created them. That means he did what he had ideated. That's what he did. And what he did was that he filled man. That word created is the word filled, which is the word bara, with his own image. So what is the image of God? That word image in Hebrew is the word yatsar. Why it? Y A C S A R. So it's not I'm, not, I'm not trying to bamboozle you with Hebrew. I just want you to understand certain things. Right? So God Yatsa, He created man in His image. The word image there is the word Yatsa. And what does it mean? The closest word to explain that is that is best understood 
as the process of pressing clay together to form an object such as a figurine. Pressing clay together. We can plainly see from that verse that man was made from nothing. Now I've missed two things together. Praise God. I'll start again. Missed two things together. And that's a very terrible mistake. That word image is not the word the answer. It's when you cram, when you see, believe you know, sometimes you don't know. It's the word selem. And the word image means an outline of a shadow. An outline of a shadow. A representation of the real thing. An outline of a shadow. For instance, look at that. Their lighting is not so good. What do you see there? Whose shadow is that? My shadow. If you come, do you know that your hair will have that kind of shadow there too? Because your hair is different from my hair? Is that not so? So that the shadow will be different. What you find in the word image is that God said, let us make for ourselves a representation, an image of the original. So, I'm not going to explain this further. I found out how to explain it for you. The Spirit just told me now. Open your phone. All of us, open your phones. Open your phones. Beautiful. We're talking about image. You want to understand image, right? Open your phones. Now go to your camera. And let it face you. What do you see? No, what do you see? No, that's not selfie. What do you see? What you see is Selem. What you see is Selem. Because that is not you. Because if you print that out and put it in, ah, look at her. So I'm asking for, so you come to my house and say, I'm asking for Fisaya. I say, Fisaya is not there. You look at the, ah, this Fisaya now? How can you say it's not here? But can you talk to him? I am not there, but that is my representation. In fact, certain times you will go to offices and you don't know whether you have missed office. But when it's the picture of the person, ah, this person I'm looking for. Because you see his picture in that office. That tells you it's a representation of him, it's an outline of him, but it's not him. Man is a representation of God. Man in his core has something that has to do with God in his core. And that is your spirit. When God said, let us make man in our own image, what God did was that the spirit of you, which is the core of you, the essence of you, is of God. You are not like God because some people say, ah, God created us in his own image. In his image. So that she's light. I'm dark. Some people are brown. God is a confused God. So when we see God, it will just be very confusing color. That's not it. The idea is that the image of God that he created like you is not the physical, is the spirit. Therefore, the Bible says in John chapter 4 verse 24 that God is spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Because to actually connect with God, you have to connect in the core of you. Therefore, the Bible says that when man sinned, God already told him that the day you sin, you will die. You shall die. God was not lying. The day man sinned, man actually died. What died in him was that it was a spiritual separation. The spirit of man died. Therefore, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, that now he who is born again, he who is in Christ, is a new creature. The new creature is talking about your spirit man that, is now, that was dead before, but is now alive, and then you can talk to God. When God speaks to you, he's not speaking to you through your physical senses. You don't feel God in the real essence of it. So that when the Holy Spirit begins to break out in this auditorium, you say, ah, ghost pimples, ghost pimples. No, no, no. That can be manifest stations and demonstrations of the spirit but that's not how you know God is there you know God is there because you sense him in your spirit man because the core of you is your spirit now I'll take you further so that you understand it deeply Genesis 2 7 give me Genesis chapter 2 and then verse 7 there are two accounts of creation in scriptures this is the first account the first account of creation is what we read Genesis chapter 1 26 to 27 and that talks about creating the second account of creation in Genesis chapter 2 and then verse 7 look at it the first one, Bible says God created. Is that not what we looked at? And I said that's the word bara, which means he filled up, right? This is the second account of creation. 
The Bible says, and the Lord God formed man. That Hebrew word formed is the word yatsar. That is to pour out as a figurine. That you see uh, um, people who make clay. And then they have, and then they sculpture, they, they begin to pour the, the mold in, into what they call a mold. They put clay into what they call a mold. That is what God means. So when they say Erupe, that means you are sound, you become sound. He's talking about the physical body. He's talking about this part of you. So after God had made the spirit of man, there was still a problem. Because man cannot relate with his environment without a body. When he made the exact duplicate, which is your spirit, you are like an angel. No container. Because without this body, you can't, you can't live here. And that's why when your body gives way, people, you say people have died. And that's why we tell you they don't die. Because the core of them does not die. But you need this body to live here. That's why I tell you take care of your body. If you die with you, this body, you misuse this body, that's the end of your life. As it concerns the physical environment. Do you understand what I'm saying now? So, what I'm saying thus far is that with my body, I contact the physical world. With my mind, I contact the mental, the intellectual, and the emotional world. Do you understand that? And then number three, with my spirit, I contact the spiritual world. Do we get it to that level? I should do the explanation again. I should do it again. You are not standing past there. Do you get it? Yes, you didn't get it. Please come back. True people, real people must be in church. Right? So no for me. You don't get it with me. Live here. Now, what am I holding? What am I holding? You. Yeah. But you are falling in love before, have you? I believe so. <laughs> Say nobody will beat you. All right, you believe so, right? So as you are, I am touching this part. And if I eat it hard, it's going to pain you. But it's not going to affect your soul. Even if I eat it hard, it doesn't stop you from falling in love. It doesn't affect your part. You are a master's degree right now. The one that read and passed. If I eat this thing, it doesn't affect it. Therefore, there are people who you call um, specially abled people, right? And they still pass exams. Because the area of which they pass is their soul and their mind. That's where they retain things. It has nothing to do with your physical body, nothing, right? So that even if you don't have legs or arms, you can still retain knowledge. Is that not so? That talks about your soul. But there is a core of you that is called your spirit. It is where you contact God. So when we pray in tongues, and you do one hour, two hours, you start feeling good from the inside. That has nothing to do with falling in love. Neither does it do with mind. What is going on is your spirit. Now, I am saying that there are two accounts of creation in scriptures, according to the book of Genesis, which is the book of the beginnings. And we say in Genesis chapter 1, which is Genesis 1, 26 to 27, we said there are two accounts. The first one was that God said, let us make man in our likeness and after our image. And then the Bible says he actually did that. He created them. So, and I explained the word likeness, which means a duplicate. You did your masters. Work with me. You did your masters. All right. You photocopy materials. Okay, so the photocopy, so when you photocopy materials, you give it back to the owner. Sometimes you don't do that. You cannot take people's material and go, do you used to do that? <laughs> So, you, but, but you had a material you gave somebody, you collected from somebody, and then you returned the material back. What you have, the document inside, was it exactly the same thing? The details. So, that is the word likeness. Forget the Hebrew I'm saying. It's Hebrew that's confusing people. They will not forget that one. But that is exact duplicate. That's what it means. So, what we are trying to say is that Jehovah, who was the creator, who was the one doing the photocopy, he said, let us photocopy ourselves. That's what the Lord said. Let us photocopy ourselves. And when they did the photocopy, man came out. Now, how can we know what man is? By knowing who, what the original is. So that 
the duplicates must look like the original. That's how we know that we take. I mean, they have not. There's no counterfeit here. So for us to know, God said, let us make a duplicate of ourselves, right? So how do I know the duplicates? By knowing the original. Jesus told us what the original is. John chapter 4 verse 24. He said, God is spirit. Do you see that? So now I know God is spirit. And so if God is spirit, he didn't say God is like spirit. That's mental for simile. Which one is that? Simile. Are you sure? You sure? Uh-huh. I, mean, I want to know whether billion people came to church. Glory to God. You know book, but you didn't see anything. <laughs> so now he made the exact duplicate. So the original is spirit. The duplicate will be what? Answer me. <laughs> The original is spirit, which is God. What will the duplicates be? We still be spirit. Exactly. Therefore, you are spirit. What I am holding is your container. If you lose this container, you die. But then your spirit keeps living. That's why you hear that people say, we don't die. Because of that spirit. Now, in the beginning, God said, don't eat that food. If you eat that food, you are going to die. And you read scriptures and you see that that man went ahead and gave birth to children. He didn't die. So, was God lying? No. What he said was going to happen was that there's going to be a death of the spirit. That means the spirit, what God calls death, spiritual death, is a cutting off from relationship with God. So, that's what happened. The death happened, but the body kept living. Because spirit goes faster before the body sometimes. Do you understand that? Or do you get the right? Abi? Right. Do we get it now? I think I've explained it another simpler way. Some people who didn't get you before they, that opportunity, but they didn't say yes. Or, but you see, what we are trying to say is that with your physical body, you connect what? With the physical world. So it is when you say, I, I really enjoyed myself in that movie. Your spirit has nothing to do with it. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. It has everything to do with all that place. All right, so th the question is that if God is therefore going to lead you, that's where I'm going. God is spirit. He cannot lead you via your flesh. He will lead you via your spirit. So that when you say, I love that man, I love him. If God says that that is not his will for your life and you don't cut off the gem future, I have to say that in Yoruba so that you understand you get in, in your mother language. It will look like your mom advising you. You understand that? But if you go ahead with it, you are going to suffer. You know why? Because uh, God does not lead us via our mind. He leads us via our spirit. Now, what do you need to do, therefore? For you to be able to follow the leading of God, you need to renew your mind. So that when God speaks to you, you are not confused. You know that this is God speaking and you are able to follow it. The reason many of us can't follow the ways of God is that our mind has not caught up with spiritual things. Therefore, that's what I said, that the God of heaven will rebirth your spirit. That means he will make it new again. But your soul, man of God, and your mind, you'll be the one to walk up it. The renovation of your mind is your responsibility. It's not the Holy Spirit's responsibility. It's your responsibility. If you have been somebody who is beginning to pornography before you became born again, you have stored files in your mind. Files are there. You've got to now work intentionally doing the work of renovating. That means you've got to read scriptures. You've got to read holy books. Uh, you've got to listen to good worship. Uh, so that as you are doing that, you are renewing. That word renew in the Hebrew means to exchange what is not there for something new. There is no mind eradicator. Oh, bless be God. You know, ladies, they do makeup. Praise God. And then when they appear, they look so good, but they don't sleep without makeup. They will say their hair must breathe. Their eyes must breathe. So they have something they call facial cleansers. So just wipe it, wipe it away. Glory to God. And their faces are gone. But listen to this. There are no mind cleansers. So that that experience you had is always going to be there. The only way that experience can become new for you is for you to renew your mind. That means you exchange that information for something else. I believe I'm teaching what is so deep. I hope you are getting what I'm talking about. 
Now, how do you train your spirit very quickly? One, by the word of God. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. What does he say? God bless you. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds even from the mouth of God. First Peter chapter 2, verse 2. The Bible says, As newborn babes desire the sincere meek of the word of God, that you may grow thereby. Growth is in the word of God. Growth is not the number of years you have been born again. Growth is in the word of God. It's in the word of God. And that's very important. Hebrews chapter 5, 12 to 14. The writer of Hebrews was trying to say that if at this time you ought to right now be taking meat. He said, but you still desire that which is the elementary principles. Elementary principles of the oracles of God. He said, it shows that you have not discerned. You have not exercised yourself to then begin to take the strong meat of the word of God. We've got to be people who can take strong meat. Takes every day you go to church. Hi, prophesy. <laughs> that's that's baby's baby. I tell people if your ministry is deliverance, if you have casted out the devil today, what are you doing next week? Are you are you are you going to return it back and then you now send it again? Because I don't understand these things. If a people are delivered and they are not taught and brought to knowledge, the devil will come back greater. You see, many people suffer from. Haven't you discovered that when a system is wrong, many people are demonized in that system? That's why there are many demonized people in Nigeria, because the system is not working. Those people you call demonized, they go to the U.S. and the demons have gone. They are no longer struggling with life. Why? Because it was not demon. It was that the system was not working. Many lives are not working not because of the devil. Many lives are not working because people don't obey the principles of God. The principles of God. You are earning 100, 500k and you want to live like somebody earning 2 million per month. Now you are in debt. You say no, they are following me for your father's house. They are not following you. It's lack of financial intelligence. You don't need so much. You need prayers. Yes, to come to wisdom. But you need application of, of knowledge. That's what you need. You need to start saving. You should not buy bone straight. No, you shouldn't. You shouldn't be planning on 300,000 to go on vacation. You shouldn't. Vacation should be to Obudu Ranch. You see what I'm saying? You, you should not now say, ah, but, but, ah, them boys are doing, them girls are doing, them boys are going to run you to death. You will finish your profit and you will finish your capital. And you will say it's demon and the devil is looking at you and say, ah, why are people lying against me like this? You know, the devil has even said that people lie against him. The, this is the father of liars, according to Jesus. And, and he still says, ah, I mean, when he goes to the throne room, it's like he always goes to the throne room. <laughs> he tells God that, can't you see your people lie against me? I told you these people are not sanctified. They lie against me. Some of you say you cannot sleep. It's the devil that not let you sleep. It's a lie. You walk him to 2 a.m. 2 a.m. Just looking at your screen, your body was trying to sleep. You say, No, is this Korean film? You must finish it. Now, a time has now come, your body is regulated to that. You now say, No, oh, you know, we don't sleep in our family. You don't have a family problem. You don't. You are the one that wired that thing that way. You see, we have come to become. It's not the gospel if it's not practical. It's not the gospel if you can't daily live with it. That's what D.L. Moody says. You see, we have to understand that these things are true. Pray. That's number two. How to exercise your spirit? You have to pray. We build up our spirit. Many people have a well-trained body, but a dysfunctional spirit. A well-trained body. I mean, we are in a generation where people stand up and say, this is a man. This is a man. Even me, that you think I'm tall. I look at some people and say, I'm not, I'm not be man for hell. If you see huge, how they are. How they are. But when life affairs come, you will see them crying like babies. Dysfunctional spirits. Spirit that has, has, been, has left ICU on, you know, you, you guys will understand it, Mortal Kombat. Chuk, chuk, chuk. The thing will come out and say, finish him. And the, and the one who wants to finish will be like, that's how some people's spirit is doing. It's just, it's just one more shot like this, you are gone. Yeah. You see? And the reason you are like that is not because they are following your family. It's because you are not a prayerful person. You don't pray. Prayer is the staff of the Christian to walk with the Lord. 
If you don't pray, you won't get results. We've got to be a people that pray. You want to go into the world with a people who have other powers. You just started your business. You just got a job. You say your, 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 your God does not like you. Your boss does not like you. But there's a particular lady he always listens to. And you are saying he's dating the lady. No, he's not dating the lady. The lady is not. He's very powerful. That lady, she's powerful. She's powerful. And that's why they are not promoting you. But when you stand up and begin to pray, you will see that your God will listen to you. People have been manipulated. Everybody is not normal in Lagos. Stop. Because everybody put makeup and wear wig. You think everybody is okay? You've got to know. This is prayer I have. You've got to pray. Some of us are so tired. You use yourself so well that when you get to the place of prayer, you just sleep off. You are supposed to sleep off in other places, not in the places of God. But it shows the state of your spirit, you know. You know some people, when I greet them, I'll just be like this. You should understand what I'm saying. I'll just be like this. That's the way the spirit is. I see you. <laughs> exercising your spirit. You've got to exercise your spirit. You exercise your spirit through reading, studying. Faith does not grow if faith does not believe anything. How you grow your muscles in the gym is by carrying weight and exercising it. You've got to exercise your faith. Not everything you should buy because you can afford it. There are things you should believe God for so that the day you can't afford that thing, the faith would have been exercised. Many of us, because we have money, we can afford everything. You don't grow your faith. The day you get married and then they say your wife, your, your sperm count is small. Ah, 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 ah. Uh, you know how they tell people, smart cat is small. And then you say, okay. And then they say, your wife, ah, ah, ah. I don't want to mention negative things because I'm preaching to my child. People, but you understand what I'm saying. Now, when they tell you you can't give back to a child naturally, you now go back home. And for the first 15 days, you are depressed. What did I marry this woman for? Now, you are saying what you marry the woman for because it's the woman's fault. But if it's you, that they say it's empty, you are shooting. You know? Why are you like that? Because you have not grown your faith. You have always bought things. You have always had things handed over to you. You did not exercise your faith. So now you will now be reminding yourself that pastor, you say there's nothing God cannot do. But it's too late. Because you don't you can't even find a scripture. You've never exercised it. Ask Tony, he goes to the gym. If you stop going to the gym for six months and you go once, you go home, you won't sleep. Because all your pains will be real. You know why? Because you have not exercised it. Many people want to exercise faith when they have not used it in the domain of life. But now they want to use it because they are desperate. So they are joining NSPP, DD, LLP, and they are joining the prayer at night. Somebody called them mountain, want something going on. You know, we don't go to mountains now. You know, all of you abuse your mom and parents for going to the mountain? All of you. All of you abuse your parents. Say they don't have knowledge. We went to Orioke. 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 Going to prophet. Praise God. I appreciate your knowledge. But you know what you do now? You are on online mountains. Online mountains from SNS, NS, PBD, LFP, um, Prophet, PP, PPT. You are everywhere. Virtual mountains, baby. You become like your parents. You've inherited the problem also. What you said cannot be. You've, you've inherited. We do prayer meetings. Sometimes we do month, month prayer meetings in the morning. I pray sweat. I know God is there. And our people, immediately we are done. That anointing is not enough. They are telling me. So they are going somewhere else. That's it. It don't matter. If you, it will, that's why many lives are not changing. Some testimonies happen. But you see, it's not to the numbers of people who join. Because God actually wants to deal with believers differently. Many people who have those testimonies are not really strong believers. So it's actually mercy that works. But you see, those strong believers, God wants to work with you differently. You've got to build your faith. Exercise your spirit. That's why you have never had God. I tell people the easiest way for God to lead anybody. A goat can be led by a dream. You understand that? They begin to just sleep. And when you sleep, what you see is what you see. Your spirit does not have to be alive. The easiest, that's why I, I, I put on my chart and said, that's not the way God wants to lead. A lady chatted me up and said, how, how will he now lead us? When he said we should not lead? How, how will we hear him? Does he even speak? If she was angry because that is all she knew. That's all she knew. That's all. <laughs> if all you know about God's leading is dream, 
you are in trouble. You might say you have been born again for 20 years, but excuse me, it's not, it's not up to two months. Your spirit man is there. That's it. And you know funny thing, people who spirit man like this, they are falling in love, they want to get married. I don't understand. How can somebody who, is, who, is, who should be trying to survive be looking for a woman? You see, some people you will know that ah, Yoruba word is alakoba. This one wants to spoil your life. You've got to be a people who exercise your spirit. Sometimes lock the door and pray in tongues for 30 minutes, one hour. No prayer point. You're exercising your spirit. Sometimes call things forth. Call forth let Lord, it's been a while they gave me clothes. Lord, let new clothes come. Let new clothes come. Just call it for because you're not desperate for clothes. You already have clothes. You are not desperate. So that the day you are desperate to japa, faith is already built up. Some people are not even japa again because la from last week, after I told them that that dream was by them, it was not God. They have stopped, they have stopped processing their faith. Say amen. What is the voice of the human spirit? How will he lead you? And this is where we will end today. The human spirit has a voice. And, and there are four voices of that human spirit that you must have. What I want to share with you, you must get it. Tell your neighbor, you must get it. Ah, you must get it though. The first voice of the human spirit is your conscience. Somebody said the conscience cannot be depended upon. I said, you don't know what you are talking about. Paul spoke again and again of his conscience being a sure guide. Acts 24 verse 16, he said, I do... Here do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense toward God and man. Listen to Romans 9 1. He said, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. Second Timothy 1 3. I thank God with myself from my forefathers with pure conscience. Unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defied and unbelieving, in nothing is pure. Titus chapter 1 and then verse 15. Some people say the conscience is not a safeguard. Can I say to you that that's not true? The conscience is a safeguard for a spirit-filled believer. Because there is a concept called a seared conscience. But a spirit-filled believer does not have a seared conscience. Your conscience is renewed. Your conscience is fresh. You listen to God and you respond. And let me tell you the concept of seared conscience. The first time you kiss that lady, or oh, amen. I, I know there are people who don't kiss ladies in this church, amen, and they are not married, amen. All right, the married bed must be undefiled, praise God. All right, the first time you kiss that lady and you are born again, something comes into you and say, That's wrong, that's wrong, that's your conscience speaking, that's how the Lord leads us, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, you can't do that, that's wrong. But if you continue and you kiss tomorrow, the voice will become lessened. The first time you say, You'll be very loud. You steal an accountant. You stole money in your workplace. Amen. Glory to God. I just had two zeros. Praise God. Uh -huh. I, have, I have some auditors here, so they know what I'm talking about. Amen. So after they are, no, they don't steal. They don't steal. Praise God. Uh, but if you add it and then you steal some things, you understand what I'm saying? Um, the, the Lord will the say, ah, ah. as you are spending the money, even eating the chicken, you, ah, holy. you, you will be feeling it. Your conscience, everything will be bitter in your mouth. But if you finish eating it, at the next day, you took some thousands again. The conscience, as you, the first time, the, now you will now hear something like, ah, you did what is wrong. But when you are eating the chicken, you won't feel bad again. You see what I'm saying? Why? Because quieting, you are quieting that conscience. You, it's, it's the concept of deadening a conscience until the time comes that the place is seared. That means it is dead to hearing from the Spirit of God. Dead. As it concerns that area, it is dead. As it concerns that area, you get what I'm saying. The believer's conscience is the voice of his spirit. There are certain things that your conscience will lead you, especially when it comes. Your conscience will lead you when it comes to stated truth and righteousness. When it is truth that is not negotiable. When it is stated truth and stated righteousness, it will lead you. Oh, let's say we lead you, your conscience. When it is about right or wrong, you are not dating a woman. You are dating a woman, you're asking her out. Do I need the leading of God to know whether I should sleep with her or not? Answer me. 
Talk now. Why do you people keep quiet when it comes to things like this? And this is what is happening now. Eh? Louder. You don't need the leading of God. Because it is stated truth. I, I want to know what is God's idea about this. <laughs> Can you, you, what's God's idea? The spirit lives inside of you. God's idea is never do it. Somebody listen to what I'm saying. So, when it comes to stated truth, the conscience is enough. They renewed not everybody's conscience. I was talking to a young lady many years ago. And she said, I have a problem, sir. I said, I don't understand. He said, when I sleep, you know, I, don't, I, I shouldn't sleep around, but sometimes I make mistakes. And when I do that, I sleep with a guy. He said, she said, I can't, I can't even pray. He said, when I go to office, I feel very bad. He said, but there are people who do it every day. And they're happy and glad. Have you not met people like that? He said, well, how are you people doing it now? How? They, they don't have your conscience. They are not born again. So that, that deposit of God on your inside is what is marking you out. And saying, you can't do this. You can't continue to do this. Am I helping somebody? She, that, that's the conscience. But you see, when we talk about conscience, it's always bad things that we always say. I want to show you something again. That, For instance, you are a leader in the church. You are a leader. Emmanuel. Come. You are, you are a leader like Emmanuel. So, 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 so Emmanuel is now cancelling uh, Philip. Come, 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 come. Emmanuel is now cancelling Philip. You know that Philip... This is the second time in church. You understand that? So you are canceling Philip. Say, ah, brother Philip, you've got to pray. Prayer is the staff to work with God. As you are saying that, pray, man of God, pray. And Philip is thinking, ah, okay, sir. Thank you, sir. He said, no, BFAC, I should disciple you. These things we do, we read scriptures. Now, you have not prayed in two days. But you are saying that. You know something will be telling you on your inside. Ah, ah, calm down. Be coming down now. Be coming down. Because what you are saying is hypocritical. What is speaking on your inside and telling you is wrong is your conscience. So though there are times I tell people some things and when they have gone, you know me, I'm a very truthful pastor, I'll tell you. And then, let's be saying, well, eh? well done. <laughs> Ah, now, for you not to be an hypocrite, you say you pray for two, two hours, you know, oh, Shelana, you didn't do it yesterday. And you are telling people, so you will now do like four hours today. If not, you are an hypocrite. So I say, ah, okay, sir. So after I do that four hours, I don't tell people, I say, be praying. I will put hours there because I cannot come out. You know what's going on? Because I am listening to it. The reason you have pastors and you have bishops who seem sometimes to say things and teach things and their life is different from what they say. Is because of this seared conscience. Don't sleep with another man's wife. It's wrong. That's why some of you are not prospering. And then the man of God will go and sleep with another man's wife. How could so people ask questions? How could he do it? You hear the testimony she was sharing about her experience. How could she do that? How would he do that? He could do that because the first time he did it. The conscience spoke because that's the voice of the spirit. But the second time, the conscience will be keeping quiet. Some of you are here. The voice, there are things he has been telling you. Go to church. I, she, I had to appear in dreams. I was telling God, I have to be appearing in people's dreams more. In people's dreams more. 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 Let them not sleep. What are they sleeping for? Pray. Let me be appearing. Sometimes let me even sometimes be nightmare so that you can sleep back. Pray. You see what I'm saying here? That's he had conscience. I'll give you another example. No, no, no. I will exchange them. You, you can go. I will exchange them. Let me get calm. I will exchange them. Let me get calm. Be fast. You don't have to wear slippers at your father's house. Amen. All right. So let's see this example. So you and your boyfriend always make out when you see. Uh, your boyfriend, I mean. You didn't even tell me that you're dating. You know when they want to do ego? When they want to sell things like that, they won't tell the pastor. Mommy, you know what I'm talking about. They won't tell their mothers. So you are now, every time you see, something happens. Now listen to this. You are now going to see him. And you know that, 
We will not do it again. You know something begins to happen to you. Your heart rate goes faster. You are going, you are excited, but something in your conscience tells you you shouldn't go there. But you went. You now say, I didn't know I would be pregnant. But you went. He told you. He told you. Do you understand what I'm saying? I know this is not the someone you will like. Now you can. I'll, when they should give me an area, I'll share with you. Since I use you for two examples. For you, you don't deserve one. It's just one. I name one. Glory to God. Praise God. But do you understand what I'm saying? That's the first one. Am I helping somebody? The second one is what is called perception. Spiritual perception. A very way by which God leads his people is by perception. What is perception? To perceive means to become aware or conscious of something. To come to realize a truth. Many times in scriptures, this is the way people came into knowledge. It wasn't just that the Holy Spirit spoke to them. This is different. You don't have a voice of the Spirit. You don't know anything. You just know. Let's consider this. Mark chapter 2 verse 8. The Bible says... The disciples were complaining about the Christ. Like some of you sometimes gather and you talk about PFA in a bad way, you know. People just talk, right? So they talked about the disciple, like they just talk about Christ. And he called them. He said, and immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that the soul reason within themselves, he said unto them, why reason you these things in your heart? How did he know their heart? He perceived. You will not have a word when it comes to perception. So when they ask you, explain it. Tell me how you know. You can't explain it. You can't. When they tell you, ah, give me a word. You can't give them a word. You just perceive. I, I'm here to tell believers that your perception is enough. You know something. That's what I was telling about you traveling. You just know you shouldn't travel. I perceive. That was what Paul did. Paul perceived that that journey in the book of Acts was going to end in so much waste and destruction. He said, I perceive. They didn't listen. You know why they didn't listen to him? It was not logical. It was not reasonable. I perceive. There are many people who would come to me and say, this is the person I want to marry. And I said, no. I remember one lady said, you can't just say no. You can't just say no. Why did you say no? You people, why did you, you just, do you know what it cost? I pray so much for him to come. Why, just, just say no. I perceived. I perceived. In the core of me, I perceived. I perceive there is danger in future. I perceive. I can't explain it to you. You must understand that your pastor perceives it. That's all. Sometimes you also perceive it. You perceive. You see, and that's why many times things happen in your life. And then you say, and I know I shouldn't have done it. I felt so. When you invest in money as a believer and you lose that money, there will always be a witness that you shouldn't have done that. But sometimes greediness cannot let you hear God. The offer is too good to be resisted. You know, when people enter into fraud, fraudulent people, is that because their hearts and their mind to their thieves. You are investing 20000 for 500000 How is that? Does that? What kind of job is that? Are they, are they carrying drugs? Do you understand? In two weeks, this is so sure. I've done it. I've gotten it. And you see posts on social media. People say, ah, it is, they are, it is your emotion that they are saying, they, they want to appeal to your greediness. They want to spot something that is greedy inside of you. I perceive I shouldn't do that. I remember many years ago, I was going to invest some money. What made it terrible was that I even borrowed the money. And I was a young pastor. It would have been a bad way to start ministry. I borrowed the money. They had sent it to me. And some guys have told me about this opportunity. The amount. So when I see young boys now with the mouth, I say, yeah, you can't get me. You can't get me. Damn, it had gotten me. The next day, I just perceived something was wrong. I perceived something was wrong. And I went, I was looking for messages of recognizing opportunities, evaluating opportunities, uh, how, not to, uh, how not to maximize opportunities, tragedy of missed opportunities. I was listening to everything, but I knew something was wrong. So I, I called the lady. I returned her money first before I went back to those boys. I said, sorry, I, I'm not sure I'll be able to do it. It's not the, it's not money, but I'm not doing it. Three months later, the whole thing crashed. 
I would have crashed. I Ministry mean, crashed. Everything would have crashed. The reason you are crashing is because you are not listening to that voice. Act twenty-seven ten. He said, "I said to them, he said, I perceive that this voyage will be with art and much damage, not only of the laden and sheep, but also of our lives." Paul didn't say the spirit spoke to me. See, don't lie. Don't lie. Look at him and say, don't lie. If he didn't say anything, don't say he said it. I remember I was talking to a young man. How do you know that's your wife? He said, I perceive. It's enough. Don't come and say, I now dreamt. I now wore suit. She now wore gown. Or you now start saying, I have the Lord said to me. In the English language. <laughs> arise, arise, arise. Cynthia, Cynthia, Cynthia. Three times he called the name. Three times he called my name. I said, I have done and I have joined your destinies together. And if they are very deep people, they will say, I have joined your destiny together from the ancient times. <laughs> and so, it, it sounds so deep. If all you have is perception, it's enough. Don't travel if you perceive it is wrong. That's what destroyed the businesses of these people that Paul traveled with. Paul told them, I perceive. I perceive. There's a young lady that is married today. She said, I said, Ma, I perceive. Okay, Yoruba person are here. Translation, the Lord gives you understanding. But, but what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say is that um, in, in English, what I'm trying to say is that <laughs> I'm very correct. You understand it now? You, you see, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that in, in the farm of a man called Longe, there is evil there. And evil Longe himself is evil. That's the literal translation. <laughs> what I'm trying to say to you is it, uh, you see, what I'm trying to say to you is that if something is evil, no matter how you look at it, it is evil. It's evil. Don't do it. There is nobody who has ever cried. We're talking about marriage again and again as examples because that's the greatest problem this generation has, relationship. Let me say this to you. There is nobody who has ever gotten married, gotten married wrongly, and you ask them and they are sincere with you that they will not say there was a knowing. There's nobody. I've, I've, I've counseled, spoken to many. One clear thing, if they are sincere, is that there were warnings. They just thought that they could manage it. They just thought that it, it was not a word, so they could go ahead. Dear friends, don't invest your hand and money when you perceive that something is wrong. I tell people, I told my wife when we were dating, if one day to the wedding I perceive it is wrong, I will not marry you. It was clear. The name of this is emotional. It's emotional. Just means I'm waiting. Ah, if I marry wrong, will I be here? Will you hear me? I would have probably died. With the oil of the anointing, they have used it to cook some more or something. God. What are you talking about? He merely said, I perceive. Sometimes that is good enough. I perceive. You can't be full of the spirit and you have perception. Perceive. Number three. The voice, what you call intuition. Sometimes people call it a hunch. Sometimes they call it a gut feeling. Sometimes they call it premonition. Intuition is very much like perception, but the key difference. Oh no. But the key difference is that this one has to do with knowing and understanding a thing without any conscious reasoning. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 9 to 12, but as it's written, I has not seen, nor he heard, neither has he entered into the mind of man, the things which God had prepared for them that love him. For the thing free searches all things, yea, the th things of God. For what man knows the thing of a man, save the spirit of the man which is in him. Even so, no man knows the things of God except the spirit of God. 
Remember we started from Proverbs 20, 27. I'm trying to round up now. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. God will use your spirit to guide you. You've just come to understand me. There are times people are talking to me about a problem. And I just understand what the problem is. It's not what they are saying. I just understand it. I just understand it. It's called intuition. You just understand it. You just understand it. And finally, uh, I'm sorry I didn't explain that so well. It's okay. The Spirit will explain it to you. Is that not fine? There's also what is called the check in the Hina man. That's the fourth one. The check in the Hina man. The, also, the Spirit also speaks to us through checks in the Spirit. What you can call bosses in the Spirit. I just sometimes I don't hear mm. sometimes somebody is talking to me. Do this, sir. If you mess, do this. It sounded very good. And I, uh, I just, I just, so I, I tune out their voice and I search in my spirit. Then I begin to get checks in the spirit. Anytime you get checks in the spirit, stop. That's what he's saying. Stop. Whatever it is, stop. Stop. Believers call it, I, I lost my peace. So the thing about checkers in the spirit as it concerns divine leadings is that it does not tell you what to do. Right? I have check as it concerns that relationship. But it does not tell you whether you should stop that relationship or whether you should not stop that relationship. You just know that something is not right somewhere. Right? So it's not enough to lead. It can only be... So I tell people, and somebody say... Yeah, I, I lost my peace. And so I told him no. Sometimes that checker is telling you God does not want you to enter a relationship now. It doesn't mean that person is not meant for you. Do you get that? But when people ask you out, say no. And you ask many ladies in church. I, I don't understand. Many ladies in church. Why did you say no? Say I lost my peace. Just, I, just, I just lost my peace. Peace is not a leading force. Peace is a checker. Sometimes what he's telling you is that you are not ready for a relationship yet. It has nothing to do with the man. It has everything to do with you. Many people have said no to God's will because of peace. In fact, people who are called peace are trying. Because always them. Peace, peace, peace. A good man, you say peace. So sometimes, even God says, yes, you can have a life with him, but he's not ready yet. And you said yes. So God said, no, you're out of time. So the lack of peace is about time. It's not about the person. It's about time. It's not about the person. You've got to understand this truth. Many times in life, our decisions mold us. Our decisions affect our lives. We must learn to choose rightly. The question you may want to ask is, man of God, is this okay? Now, let me read a scripture for you because I give scriptures for other ones. Let me give you a scripture here. Acts chapter 16, verse 6 to 10. Now, when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. After they were come to Mysia, they are said to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. Did you see that? What did he do? He suffered them not, or the spirit hindered them. That's what our translation says. Now, does we now tell them what to do? So they were evangelizing is a good thing. What mission is a good thing? Why are you stopping us? Why are you stopping us? Are you saying we should not do evangelism? Getting married is a good thing. Making money is a good thing. Why are you stopping me? So yeah, they had stops. If that were you, you will pack your bag and go home. And say, we lost our peace on the, on the mission feed. So we came home. We came home. We lost our peace. You pack your bag. We'll see what they did. And they passing by Mysia came down to Troas. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. What led them? A vision. They asked to the man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, 
immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for us to preach the gospel unto them. The check stopped them, but he didn't tell them what to do. God now got the attention, and God now told them what to do. So they still went on that missionary journey. It's not that they now went back to Antioch, where they were sent from. The Lord really ordered their path. Could it be that God is not against you doing business? He just wants to reorder your path. Could it be that God is not against you getting married? He just wants to reorder your path. Could it be that this problem you are facing, this challenge in relationship, could it be that it has everything to do with God wanting to reorder your life? Could it be that the reason you are having this delay is God seeking to reorder your life? Many times, God no or God stop is not denial. It's actually reprocessing our life so that we are ready when the time comes for our period and our seasons, even of performances and liftings. Bow down your head, bow down your heart. And I want you to sincerely talk to God today and say, Lord, help me. Help me to be led of you. You can't get to destiny being led of your feelings. I love him. I love him. I love him. When he slap you once, you stop loving him. I want you to begin to say, Lord, help me. Help me to be led of you. Help me to respond to your inner voice. Help me to respond to these checks. Help me. Help me, Lord, help me. Thank you for listening. This has been The Living Word. If you have been blessed by this teaching or for counseling or any other inquiry, kindly send us an email to pfa at the ransomedhouse.com or fisayoadenii at yahoo.com or please call 0912-772-3824. The Ransomed House, empowering people to live for Jesus.